There are DJs playing music in space. What? Also, you know Scott Joplin? No. Nope. He had a lot of notes. I'll show you a new Joplin that will hold all your notes. Plus, we're both going to show you how to get around. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Hover. Make a name for yourself with Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase for any domain extension for the entire first year. And by Aftershock's unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iostoday for $50 off the tech bundle. And by Mint Mobile. They provide the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost. Because everything is online. Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan and get the plan shipped to your door free at mintmobile.com slash iOS. Get around, get around, he gets around. Hi, ho, hey, 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 welcome to iOS Today. I'm Leo Laporte. You're back, you're back, you're back. Yes, thanks. Uh, that's Micah Sargent. Thanks to uh, Megan Maroney for filling in for me last week. How'd it go? She sat in this chair, I could tell. She sat in that chair. She said, I'm Le she said, look at me. I am the Leo now. <laughs> and I said, okay. Did that mean she didn't get let you get a word in edgewise? <laughs> no, that meant that she's actually paying for all my apps. Now, I'm the so. Leo now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, we cover on this show uh, the uh, iPad, which is now technically iPad OS. Mm -hmm. The iPhone, that's still iOS. The Apple TV, which is TV OS, and the Apple Watch, which is Watch OS. And yet, and yet, in my mind, and they're HomePod all OS. iOS today. <laughs> that's what we're doing today. No, today specifically. I thought we could talk about uh, round, round, get around, we get around because I have been. Getting around this new town. You're in a new town. You need to learn how to use the facilities. I got to find the old town road and the new town road and every road in between. There is apparently uh, in Upper New York State a city that has a sign, a street called Old Town Road. That sign keeps getting stolen. I'm not surprised. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk? Not uh, the person who uh, decided to name that at some point or the yeah, committee probably. The committee. Uh, so one of the things that's that i have used for years in the midwest is apple maps and so now i have a question for you you find it's pretty accurate in in your neck of the woods in my in my neck of the woods yeah. uh over there uh, it's pretty darn accurate really yeah because i was talking to somebody just the other day who said uh they used it regularly they live in la and i said yeah i think probably in urban areas like la san francisco new york it's going to be good but you're even in the back the back roads of St. Joe. <laughs> Those old town roads Those in St. Joe. Those old town roads, it works pretty well. So I have heard the opposite experience. I've heard, so... Uh, That's counterintuitive. You'd figure they'd do the cities. For, well, friend of the show, Lori Gill, um, she said that she has, she lives in Sacramento, California. Yes. She has a lot of issues with Apple Maps in Sacramento that she's never had with Google Maps. And... It could be, you know, that's the thing is that once you get used to the app that you're using, then you kind of stick with it. And if another app does something different, it well, could be what the makes, issue. What makes a good app from your point of view? A good app or a good... A good map app. Good map app. So for me, a good map app, it does two things that I needed to do. One, it has good lane guidance because ah. I am terrible about, like, when I, when I turn on a, a navigation app, my brain suddenly just sort of shuts down. I don't need to. I don't need to drive. I don't. I'm just. I don't need to pay attention. As long as I stay in between. Just this tell and me this, what to do. Yeah, and so I need to know. Hey, I need to be getting over into that lane, especially yeah. if there's a lot of traffic. I agree with you. I hadn't thought about that, but I totally agree with you. And for the and longest time, Google's Apple, very. Go ahead. Google's very good at that. Right? Yes, Google, Google is says, very good at it. Get in the right two lanes mm -hmm. for this next turn, that kind of thing. Hey, bozo! Yeah. You've, you've got 12 miles to get in the right I, two I, lanes. I agree with you. I need that. Apple Maps. Apple Maps didn't do didn't that. Do that they recently. have started doing okay. it, which is nice. However, Google Maps has been doing it longer and they do a better job. Well, of remember, it. Google Maps has been doing it for years more. Mm -hmm. Apple's a relative latecomer to the game. And I think those are the things that, as you gather data, 
with your Apple Maps car, yeah. you get better at over time. In I would hope so. In fact, when I was driving in San Francisco, um, one of the things that I thought I was really good at was, hey, at the next stoplight, yes. then you need to be in this lane and get over. Because you know, you know, you've got like three stoplights right in a row. I wish it would do things like, see that sign over there? <laughs> that sign or something like that. Or yeah. you'll see a sign to Old Town Road. Turn left after that. After that sign. Something like that. Something like a human would do. That requires a lot of detailed information about topology that I don't know if these maps apps have. Yeah, because I want the preemptive uh, direction. The more I get, the better. Yeah, because I I tried. I genuinely do try to focus on the road. I have do not disturb while driving turned on. I want to be able to focus on the road. And if I have to keep tapping like, okay, now oh, no, no, it no. again, yeah. I don't want to have to do that. And so I would love that. It's like, hey, you're going to see a McDonald's at this corner. You want to go to the next one up and then take a left. To have that knowledge available to me so that I can kind of be preemptive about my driving. Because I see people like swerving three lanes over. And oh, yeah. I don't want to ever be doing that. And that happens still, even with the best maps from time to time, either I'm not paying attention or they didn't give me enough warning and I will suddenly have to go, oh no, or I'll miss, you know, I'll drive right I by drive it. past it. Right. I, I am not, I'm no, like, no, no, I'm not going to no, swerve over. No. And even if it, it it's like, oh, I could get over, but I feel uncomfortable. Psh, no, I'll no, just let it too. reroute me. Yeah. Uh, so Google maps and Apple maps kind of are fighting for my uh, attention now, the, the right now. The good news is if your automobile has CarPlay, you can use both now, thank goodness. Yeah, and a third yeah, party, yeah, which is Google's Waze. Google bought Waze some time ago. That's the crowdsourced map. Do you ever use that? I just started using Waze, and that was one of the ones that I wanted to talk about uh, specifically. And by the way, they've added slowly over time, Google's taken more and more of Waze and put it in Google Maps. For instance, you can now report incidents on Google Maps. That used to be the real selling point for me of Waze. They would say, there's a speed trap up ahead, or there's an accident up ahead. My big uh, problem, it's happened to me several times now, <laughs> And I think it's because we live in Northern California, but there's always garden equipment in the road. Have you have you run into that yet? Be beware. There'll be rakes, there'll be hoes, there'll be weed whackers, there'll be lawnmowers in this in the road. <laughs> lawnmowers. Just and I love. I re I've hit them several times. Uh, the last time my insurance company said, "Well, that was your fault. Oh, you should have not hit it." And I said, "But it, but it, like, it, <laughs> I didn't see it until the car in front of me." Switched out of the lane, and there it is all Oh, of a yeah. Okay, so I've had that. Yeah, there was like a box in the road, and the yeah, person like, didn't switch until the last So minute. Waze, you can say, hey, I saw a box. In fact, Waze even has a thing where you can wave your hand over it and say there's a box in the road, and it'll, it knows where you are. It'll put a pin in there. And I like that kind of heads up that Waze uh, gives you. Google Maps has started doing that lately as well. Yeah, so let's... Uh, this... Incident ahead. Oh, there's an incident, incident ahead. Incident ahead. So first of all, I love this app because you get to choose... Good drive. The voice. Who are you using? Oh, that oh, that's is so Cookie funny. Monster. Oh, nom, that's nom, so nom, funny. Nom, 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 nom. I thought it was Hulk Hogan for a minute. <sighs> Turn left. Nom, nom. Whoa. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, that's hysterical. And then turn right. <laughs> is that not the cutest thing? So this morning on the way to work, Cookie Monster was letting fun. me know, you know, if, because there are a couple routes from my place to work to go. And that of course, I'm not going to triangulate, fun. but, uh, and depending on how the traffic is doing, I can take one of the two routes. And so I went ahead and turned it on and Cookie Monster said, just go ahead and take the highway. Oh, that's, that's the best way to go. So funny. And those voices change all the time. So sometimes it's Cookie Monster. Uh, I think before it's been uh, like a rapper, um, I think like T-Pain or something. Anybody, this is kind of the fun thing about this. Anybody can record these. I have recorded ways directions that's actually one of the things i was going to mention was that i could have leo tell me how to get to work in the morning um or back from work and it's not a good idea <laughs> here's what else i like about ways is that you can see here find the best time to leave so if i tap view more times it's predicting traffic at different times and telling you hey if you want to arrive at your destination within a specific period of time, now's a good time to go or now's not a great time to go, depending on what traffic usually looks like. And so yesterday when I was trying out ways um, from here to my house, I said, hey, if you know, if you wait 10 minutes, you're going to get there a lot faster. You're not going to be sitting in traffic. So I said, you know what, ways, you know what, Cookie Monster, I'm going to listen to you. Uh, I don't understand. There's a, there's a, collection point system in this and i haven't figured out how that works so someone who oh, uses it's for carpools this was like it had candy in the road for me 
It said, uh, "Oh, they gamified it." A yeah, little there's bit. like gamifying. Yeah, and I don't yeah, know. Yeah. What I've you always can do. ignored that. I feel like that's a that's dangerous. Yeah. I do now. There's there's t aesthetically two things about ways. One I dislike, which is that it's very plain. You don't get a satellite view. Mm -hmm. You get a street view. I guess if you're navigating, that's probably better. The thing I do like is you could see other wazers, and the different wazers on the road have different icons. Um, and yes, there's candy. Uh, <laughs> I think the candy indicates oh, no, no, you've no, no, gone no. a certain number of miles. It's like a. Can you like trade them in for something? No, I think it just indicates. I'm looking. It is really handy to have the colors on the roads, and Google Maps does this now too. And they're getting, I believe, getting the information yes. from ways where when it's red like this, you'll see the average speed twenty four miles an hour. I loved that yesterday. I think that's really really handy because sometimes you just suddenly come upon oh now we're at start stop traffic right and we didn't. We didn't know. Waze uses a point system to track the how much you use it. Yeah. Different yeah. actions give you different number of points. They're trying to encourage you. Oh, it's a leaderboard. Yeah. Oh, you don't know about the leaderboard, huh? That's one of those. Oh, yeah. That's fun. I, I actually would recommend having all three. You're going to have Apple Maps on any Apple device anyway, but I would recommend installing Google Maps in Waze. And if you use CarPlay, the good news is you can choose from any of those three maps as your navigation and a kit you know what we'll do when lisa and i are going for instance going to the city where traffic is notoriously unreliable mm -hmm. or if we're in los angeles where it's just bad always any yeah. hour of the day uh is before we go we'll get the route on our google uh, maps but i will check ways to see if ways agrees with google maps and if there are any trouble spots like it and and ways really the rerouting on ways in my experience pretty trustworthy have you found that yeah so uh, that's been one of the things is that you know cookie monster says hey you should go <laughs> this way and like, you know what cookie, cookie monster, monster i trust you with my whole heart wow and cookie monster has not let me down in that no. um and that's one of the things that i do appreciate it it's interesting the sort of this app more than any others that i've used in terms of mapping it has a lot more advertising that happens in it that's recent they really monetized it haven't they yeah. you see a cvs store and you tap and it says here's a coupon for you know i went to the pharmacy yesterday to pick up some medicine and on my way there it was like hey we've got some coupons for you yeah and then there was another one about uh oh goodness now i can't remember what it was but it popped up and said oh it was for parking um it could give you like a discount on parking in certain places, right. which is nice, but it did feel a little like, you know, I just want you to tell me where I'm supposed to be going. Yeah. The real value of Waze, I don't know if you do this, is the crowdsourced information. Absolutely. If I tap, uh, for instance, in this slow traffic, if I tap this traffic jam button, you could see two people have reported it 40 seconds ago by Earth Time. Um, I can, as I go by it, say, yep, he's right, or I can add my own a comment to it, a public comment. Um, I think all of this makes it very valuable, but I do, and I think others have said this too, I do worry that it's distracting. So ideally, you're not doing this while you're driving. Exactly. But I do, I do think that we all help each other by using ways, even if you don't report incidents, uh, at least by using it, you're giving this, this That's speed information. That's important for people to know. So yeah. you can turn on and off the functionality to have your... Uh, your your ways information sent because it is as you're using it crowdsourcing and right. so once you get to your location if you want to stop that then you can do so you can also just force quit the app to do it that way if you want and essentially what that does is says hey stop poor you know stop sending my data to the system and I I don't want to sort of contribute at that time yeah yeah now as Un understandable is people want to take their own private vehicle. I want to encourage mass transit. Uh, it really is great. And nowadays there's lots of choices. This is my favorite mass transit app. It's called City Mapper. Have you ever used City this? City Mapper. I've heard of it. I have not used it. If you go, well, we were in London a few years ago. City Mapper was a lifesaver. You, you enter in where you want to go and then it will show you all the ways you can go. Let's say I want to go to AT&T Park to see the Giants play from my current location. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, there's my start point. There's my end point. Uh, I think I've set those. What am I? What am I doing wrong? Please set your start and end points. Current location. Maybe it doesn't have your work. There we go. All right. Oh. End point. Uh, there's the start point. Oh, I think you have to say that's my. That's my end. I have to say that's my end point. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Well. 
Mm. I'm sure everybody watching is going, Leo. <laughs> Leo, do you, this. You also say where when you're going to do it. So I I'm not going to leave for the ball game till after the show. So right about <laughs> uh, eleven o'clock, I'm I'm headed out of here. Do you really do? Do you watch ball games? I love baseball. What are you nuts? It's no, I'm bored. Well, you got to eat hot dogs, drink beer. You can't do any of those. Yell things. at the pitcher. I know well, it's really no fun one. anymore. Yeah. How many carbs for yelling at the pitcher? Uh, nothing. Oh, good. Well, there you go. That's uh, keto. I, I I like to shout, "Hey, pitcher, pitcher, we want a pitcher, not a belly itcher." Things like that. Right. It's really great. Anyway, swing, bada, 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 swing, bada, swing, bada. I was swing. actually sitting next to a guy who was doing all those little league shouts. The worst part was. We were in this area that's right behind the on-deck circle. So the guy was 10 feet away <laughs> oh from the on-deck circle. You're like, it's and not he me. was taunting the guy. Yeah, it was like, nope, nah, uh, not me. <laughs> these these professional players, they are very, uh, they are stolid. They put up with a lot of crap. So once you enter your, your thing, it'll show you your different choices. So here's bus. I could take a bus. I could take Muni. I could take BART. I could take a bike. I could take a scooter. Show my screen if you would. A scooter? I could take a, yeah. So this is the new thing, right? Is uh, They've added that, by the way. They've got Uber. They've got Lyft. They've got scooters. They've got mopeds. So if you're in a city, a city you don't know very well, mm -hmm. I think this is really useful for tourists. If you're sitting in your hotel saying, as we did, how do I get to the Tower of London? Entering in the Tower of London and then seeing your choices. Okay, that's Seeing really cool. how long it will take. Mm -hmm. And then... When you choose it step by step, it will actually show you, you know, in in great detail how to get there. It's going to take you two minutes for me to walk to the East Side Transit Center, and then I'll take the 44 to Santa Rosa and blah, 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 oh, blah, Oh, that's blah. incredible, actually. So this is, a, and, and you choose the route, you know, so if I, if I don't know what it's going to say for Scooter, but... That may take a while. He's and like, you even see there's different... This is historical. Well, it has the brand, too. Skip, Lime, Scoot, and Bird. So you know that in this area, those are the scooters I could use. I don't know. There's something about Skip, Lime, Scoot, and Bird. It's my, my law firm, actually. <laughs> uh, so this is really, really... Uh, That's actually incredible. And so can you choose then, sort of see the different ways that yes. you could get there? Yes, you and get, get to the choose. choose between and you them. could say, well... Take us 24 minutes by bus, but we could go by tube. Oh, we'd have I to walk that. a little more on the tube, but we'd get there a little faster. Things like that. I love There's that. There's a car coming in three minutes. I mean, it even says things like that, depending on the city. So not every city, uh, but this is a must-have app if you're traveling. City Mapper. Uh, and I believe it works with the Apple Watch as well, which is kind of nice. That's that's very nice. That's, by the way, the big advantage Apple Maps has if you're walking over Google Maps or Waze is the Apple Watch. And, and I think the reason for that, at least for me, I, I'm a little prideful, and I don't want people to know I'm a newbie uh, in a place. Well, also, sometimes that marks you for uh, attack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially if you've got your big backpack on your back right. with all the peddler oh, stuff in it. Oh, this guy's a tourist with his peddler back. We're going to get him. And having that little tap on the wrist, it's like, okay, now you turn yep, left. You turn know left. what you're doing. <laughs> That's really nice. Google is doing something new with their Google Maps, and I don't know uh, if it's yet available on the iPhone, but I think it's really interesting. And this is, again, for walking directions. Driving, you don't really need this. Uh, but when you're walking, sometimes when you come out the door of the, of the restaurant and you've got to go to the, you know, the park, I, I don't know about you, but I'm in New York City. I look left, right. I can't really tell which way to go. And you, yes. you've probably done this. You're going, you know, the arrow, is it? Frankly, is it, even in a car, I do that. It's hard to know. Don't tell me to go east. What's east? So what Google's starting to add, and I think this is really interesting. Apple will do this as well. They've talked about it, is augmented reality when you're walking to their oh, Maps apps. That's nice. So you hold it up. You see through the camera what you're looking at, and it has a big arrow saying, go, go <laughs> the that other way. way not go this way. that way. Uh, and as you turn and your picture changes, it'll have then an arrow saying, go this way. So that, to me, I mean... Maps for Dunderheads, we should have typed, type, titled this show, because <laughs> that's really what it is. But I'm a Dunderhead, especially I'm, when I'm in a city. Look, I'm a proud Dunderhead. Yeah. I, it's, it's tough with all the other things that our brains are doing to also always be constantly aware. I think it also helps to have a person who does think like that, if, if you can. And I'm yes. just not. I'm not that person. One person with you that's direction That oriented. has a compass somehow yeah. built into their body. Lisa is very good at that, but she said, since I'm married to you now, I will stop doing that. And you're in charge of, even to the point of when we leave the hotel room, are the elevators to the left or the right? And it is now my job to navigate. Interesting. Yeah, I get lost in my doctor's office sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, God. Yeah, well, you go in the back there where yeah, they like, can stick you. Oh, we're going to put and you then, in four different and then you're in a, and then you And then how do I get back out? 
And they say, well, just turn a left and then a right and a left, left, left. <laughs> Turn left at the blood supply, and, and then, then right, they walk away. And then they you, walk away, and I'm trapped. Wait, how do I get I out? I don't of want here? another procedure. I just want out. <laughs> yeah, you walk into the surgery room. You had that surgery too. I room. It was just me. No heavens, no. Oh, uh, we've been waiting for you, Joe. <laughs> Come on in. I want to keep my pancreas. <laughs> we'll have that pancreas out in a moment. <laughs> Please. It will barely hurt. You're sedated, right? <laughs> No. Um, no. Uh, speaking of Google Maps, another thing that we should talk about with Google Maps is the feature that allows you to use them offline. I think this is very important. Oh, show people how to do this. Yeah. So you're not always going to be, so if you will show my screen here, uh, you're not always going to be in a position where you have access to internet, especially if you go overseas and maybe you haven't set up your international uh, data plan yet or what have you. If you tap on the hamburger icon in the top left corner of the screen or wherever it happens to be, depending on what app you're For using. People who are wondering what he's talking about, it's that three lines that could, if you really were generous, look like a hamburger. Listen. <laughs> no, that's the official name. I'm not, not. I'm not mocking you. I just understand that you and I know that because we are in the biz. We. That's just true. But we, people not in the biz say what icon? I don't see a hamburger. Hamburger. Three I, that's lines. True. That's true. If you don't know, yeah, there's three well, lines. Is there a name the for left. the three dots yet? Uh, more. Usually. More. Yeah. yeah. That's well, that's what Apple calls theirs. Yeah. And in fact, I was just confused the other mm -hmm. day because I was looking at a support document and it said tap more and then da da da. And then, and then I went and I was like, well, I don't see Where's the more? more. Where's the word more? Right, more. So, however, you need to get to the contextual menu, tap the button to do so. And you'll see down near the bottom is a an option called offline maps. Oh, this is so great. Now, Google lately has been doing this kind of semi-automatically if you're in this an area. True. But it's also good if you, you know, I've just arrived in Paris. I have no idea where I am. You can create the radius and save the entire map. So even if you're offline, you don't get lost. I think this is really fantastic. Yeah, so I can tap custom map and then Look I can that. choose the place that I would want. So in this case, let's see. Yeah, let's... You get, the more, obviously, the, the smaller you make it, the more detail. I mean, the more uh, data you're going to store. I'm going to Crescent Valley. In the one Nevada. question I have is if you zoom out way, way, way out okay, like let me that, try that, do you get all the, uh, does it change how much detail it saves if you zoom way out? Let's see, because I th I could probably fit the whole of Australia in that. Um, yeah, and then wouldn't they like stop recording every little bum, bum, platypus bum, or bum, I don't know. Because you could save a oh, lot I of guess data. it's not that. Yeah, so... Let's save. Oh, see, it won't let you. It won't let you save more than that box. Yeah. yeah. So this box is the extent. Still, of that's it. quite a that bit. Is Why you're getting. You? Uh, you're getting a big. But that's really great because this way, if oh, you don't have connectivity, one thousand seven. So that's a gig, and if I it's a one thousand seven hundred twenty-five megabytes of of yeah. data for this map. But look, as I zoom in, it's that less. data amount gets smaller. Yeah. So. Yeah. It seems like you're detailed no matter what. The map has, and I can't remember the exact number, but it's something like seven layers. And the, the, the most zoomed in layer, of course, has lots of street information and points of interest information. And as you zoom out, that starts to disappear. It'd be nice to know how much of that it's going to capture with the offline maps. And I, I'm i sure there's a, somebody somewhere says it, but uh, I'm always wondering how much I'm going to get. And so in other words, take as little as you can you know, if you're, yeah, in, exactly. if you're in a city and you know you're not going to leave town, don't don't go more than the city, that kind of thing. I think that's a good idea. And it lasts, it doesn't last forever. No. Um, obviously, they need to be updated and, and that will change. And then you can also delete and remove. And I think it auto deletes map. after 30 or 60 days. And if, there if, might, I'm if, fairly certain there's an option, update offline maps automatically. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't say how often it ends up deleting it there. Um but I get notices saying we're going to delete this map or do you want to update this map? So I think after a few months, it, it's because you don't want to. It does take a lot of space, right? Absolutely. And you don't need to have it after a certain uh, extent. So let me talk about another. Uh, sure. I believe this is free with in-app purchases. I'm just going to check here. Uh, yeah. Free with IAPs. It is another offline map called Maps.me. Uh, offline now this guides. is interesting at maps.me, yeah. For every kind of journey. So they're specifically offline. Yes. And in fact, when I launched the app for the first time, it immediately downloaded an offline map of my area. Uh, you can see different layers for traffic and subways. So you do get some of that transit information. Oh, look at that Now traffic. remember that these different companies get their maps from different places. Google and Apple did start with map information from some of the GPS companies like TomTom. Tom. Um, but there is also an open source 
uh, map, which I really like, called Open Street Map. Street Map. That's it. That's what theirs is based and, on. And so, yeah, this one's based on Open Street Map. The problem with Open Street Map is it relies on the kindness of strangers. So some areas are better mapped than others. Some areas are more up to date than others. You can participate in Open Street Map. You can actually download Open Street Map software. And if there's a road that is, uh, you know, off line for repairs you can add that to their map and please do if, if you think of it open street map is used by a lot of uh, programs including running programs bicycling programs and uh, this my maps program now have you downloaded that and changed your road to old town road i think i should there's the problem yeah. as you can see <laughs> trolling trolling, with, with, trolling. Crowd, with crowdsourced uh, stuff people have even tro trolled google maps uh, google has to work very hard to keep uh, junk out of. So I imagine they've done that with Apple Maps as well. I'm sure they have. Uh, so some of the functionality within this, uh, like I mentioned, with what Leo was talking about a little bit, you've oh, got that's nice. car, walking, yep. different type of transit, bicycle, etc. Uh, there are also discover nearby options for attractions, uh, eating and drinking. So these all get downloaded when you download the Maps.me template, depending on where you are. And I think that's really fantastic to be able to have all of that information offline. And with an app that's completely devoted to being an offline mapping application, you might get more of what you're looking for, as opposed to using Google Maps offline functionality. And just like Leo said, understand the difference between the sourcing on those two, because they're obviously going to be different depending on OpenStreetMap or uh, TomTom and, and Google and Apple and all of the different ones that are out there. I have to say that I am a bad, bad person. Okay. And uh, sometimes when I arrive in a new community, I like to see what the home values are <laughs> or even snoop inside a neighbor's home to see what it looks like. Now, hold on. Can you clarify that last thing you just said? You can do it snoop. with Zillow <laughs> okay. or Trulia. I like Zillow. I keep Zillow on my uh, phone at all times because what if you're, you know, in uh, a town and you say, this is a nice town, this Petaluma, wonder, what should we buy or rent a place here? And with Zillow, you know, I do often think that as a young millennial, yeah, I'm like, oh, I want to buy a house. With here. Zillow, you can <laughs> see, you know, what the houses in your neighborhood cost, uh, what they, and as you can see, Petaluma is definitely a more expensive place than it used to be. Wow, here is something on Liberty Smith Street: four bedroom, three bath for one point seven million dollars. Oh, they haven't taken that off yet. I just bought that. Oh, it's a heritage home, so you can learn more about it. I need to call my realtor. You can see the Zestimate. You can even see Zestimates on homes that aren't for sale. Oh, my God. And, and uh, by the way, I should warn people, everything is public information. This is the price history. It was first sold in 2000 for 695000 Oh, my god. These gosh. are all the sales. This is the tax history, what its assessments have been. All of this stuff is public information. So if you like to snoop... <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better. And of course, you, if the house is listed, you very often can, can go to the realtor site and get some uh, pictures of the house. I like the color. Even the inside of the house. <laughs> so actually, uh, I just, I'm so I'm a, a snoop, I admit it. And I just like to look at what That's people a have home. done. Yeah, it's a beautiful house. Oh, wow. That may be not so much. That is... That's interesting. That this is... is yeah, I, that's honestly, nice okay, guilty pleasure. This is kind of fun. I like to look in people's dec at people's decor and mock them. <laughs> I do. I like to... The thought of you just like, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Lisa and I will do this. Well, we've been looking at places in Vegas, right? Oh, man, that is fun. I Because the decor in Vegas... Is probably all over the place. It's right? Vegasy, right? I mean, if you're going to have a condo in Vegas, baby, you're going to have Vegas, giant baby. nude statues and things. Fountains in the foyer. Mm -hmm. So that was the name of my first novel. Wasn't it, it was it was the murder. The murder. The murder the in the fountains in the, the foyer. foyer. Yeah. The fountains in the foyer are running blood. I think was the was the that, title the re publisher rejected. How did you? Wow. I knew that. That's I've amazing. Researched you before Lord, we hired yeah, you. That must have been it. <laughs> you knew. <laughs> oh god. So Zillow is really fun, and there's that Trulia is something. another company that does the same thing. They're, I think they're basically the and same. Trulia does. It's good for uh, renters. That was That's one of the right. first places that, that I you looked used? Yeah. Um, yeah. at first. Yeah. It ended up being though someone from the chat who helped me find the place that I. You're kidding. F and done. F and done. Thank Our you. former producer, he used to work for us. You know. Yeah. He yeah. told me. Great guy. He also taught me that you can direct message in IRC, which I didn't know. <laughs> 
So, yeah, he direct messaged me literally during an iOS today and said, hey, I used to live here. You should check it out. Oh my it was God. dog friendly. And I oh looked and I was like, this yeah. is the place for yeah. me. He and, he so and, shout out and thank you. He and his dogs. Uh, let's talk about now you're there. You're at the place you're I'm trying here. to go. Yes. Or maybe you're, you're not, you know, you, it doesn't have to be for travel. It's you're, you're in California and, you know, you, you maybe you used to live in Missouri. Yes. Or Missouri mm -hmm. where gas was like a dollar fifty. I'm and sorry, you, I didn't warn you about this today, Mike. You moved to California and gas is $12 a gallon. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, that's not true, It's but it is expensive. And so Gas Buddy. Gas Buddy? Gas Buddy. Gas Buddy? Is that a gas, question? Buddy. Gas Buddy? Gas Buddy? Or is it a statement? It's both, <laughs> depending on how you're feeling. Um, <laughs> often I'm feeling like it's a question. So this is free, uh, <laughs> this app here, and it helps you find inexpensive gas near you. Uh, it is all about saving money on gas, depending on, so, oh, here we go. I'm picking a fuel type. I just use regular fuel. Um, and you can see now, well, there's a place that's really close to you, but it costs $3 and 85 cents. Oh, that's, that is, that is California. And then if I look at that, oh, 347, that's a good price. And you see wow. right here at the top, it shows you the lowest gas. It's 5.87 miles away, but it's $3 and 35 cents. <laughs> You're going to use a gallon of gas, gas to, to get save to the five place. Cents. That's, uh, uh, that's a good economy. And so that's, that's uh, that. But I, I always like go to the Valero. Are they, is that an ad? Well, there are ads here. Yeah. Um, you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then also, but depending, the, the, they've got some But these some are real prices. So, yeah, yeah, these are real prices. And that this is what I like. You can report if the price is right or wrong. Ah, nice. Um, and you can update them whenever you go and get gas. Gas, buddy. Uh, gas, buddy. You know, I, I let's just try this because I think this okay. could be a scene in my next play. You do the question version. Okay. Go ahead. Gas, buddy? Gas, buddy. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing it to you. Yeah. <laughs> gas, buddy? Gas buddy. <laughs> Gas buddy. And scene. And, scene. <laughs> and what are we calling that? I don't know. Oh, we'll figure it out. Two guys <laughs> passing the time. Two guys um, passing. That is a good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that is that is a little bit about Gas Buddy, but I do want to talk about some of the other things that are involved with this. Let it. Uh, <laughs> Unleaded. And scene. <laughs> Premium. Leaded. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. What is the opposite of premium? I don't even know. That's yeah, regular. We, yeah, regular versus premium. Because diesel would be the opposite. Of, Go ahead, try it again. Okay, premium. Ethel. <gasps> <laughs> Did they still have ethyl? It's, that really dates you. If you pull up to a gas station I think these ethyl days, is the name and of you my say, aunt. "Hey, buddy, fill it up with ethyl." Oh, ethyl alcohol. I thought you were saying ethanol, but you were saying in the old days. Ethyl. Yeah. You could fill it up with ethyl. Fill it up with ethyl. <laughs> I hope that they had like a, a mascot and it was just this woman with like gray hair and her name was Ethel. My my grandma, my great grandma. It'd be really ethyl. funny if the if the gas attendant said, Oh yeah, well, give me a minute, and then Ethel comes ethyl out. Ethel comes out and fills up your gas yeah. for you. Uh here there are some fun, silly things that are in the app. So you can win free gas, for example, uh, every day you can enter with your points. Win Again, free this is gas. trying to nice. get you Gamify. to use the app. Yeah, 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 It's gamifying. There are challenges and things like that. But they actually do have uh, a gas buddy card. And it is, uh, it's a free card. And you can save five cents per gallon on Philips nationwide. So... It, it also features some other different discounts that you can get within the app. But I am th legitimately thinking about getting the Gas Buddy card. Of course, just like any rewards card, it's going to be trying to collect your data and see where you go to get gas and things like that. Um, but that's the little bit that you give up for, you know, when you go to Walgreens, for example, and use your your discount card there. They know what you buy and they can market you market to you better you get discounts in, in return. So I'm thinking about getting the Gas Buddy card so that I'm not paying $15 on Ethel um, every time I go and fill up my You tank. lost me when uh, I'm, I'm, my mind is still reeling with, is it really a buck fifty for gas in Missouri? <laughs> no, it's like two twenty. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Because mm -hmm. we're close, we're over $4 in almost everywhere in California. We have rules though. <laughs> you live in that lawless swamp. Yeah, yeah. We have we rules have here. Rules. Excuse me, sir. We have rules here. Uh, let's take a break. We have lots more to talk about. Our show today brought to you by Hover. How many domain names do you have conservatively? I have 12 domain names. Oh, 12. You're a punter. Hover. 
Yeah, of course, because you're smart. I didn't even have to tell you to go to hover.com mm -hmm. to get your domain names. I have dozens, more than 12, many dozens. Because I, you know, and I bet you a few of our listeners do this too. If I get a good idea for a business or just a, a cute domain, domain name, for a while, I don't know why, I was concerned about it getting arrested. So I registered freelaporte.com. Because I thought, well, if I ever get arrested, then we can do the fundraiser at freelaporte.com. I like that. So I have that. Uh, uh, for a while, my wife said, I want to sell fancy pants. So I have fancypants.com. Um, anyway, it's really fun to register domain names. And here's the real problem I have. I go to hover.com and I'll enter an idea. For instance, I wanted, okay, I wanted to create a special encrypted email domain. Okay. So that, and I try, and it's fun. And you, and what you, so I entered private, secure, secret and yeah, there's the site, fancypants.com. Uh, this we, is really yours? No. <laughs> no. I thought no. you were serious. No. What? They hijacked my, my domain. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get for trusting you. Oh, don't ever trust me. <laughs> but I will if you want, if you ask sometime, if you ask nice, I'll show you my hover.com and all the domain names I have. Um, so I was looking, and what's nice about hover is. They have over 300 domain name extensions. So, you know, with .com, you can still get .coms. Yeah. But .com, all the good names are pretty much taken. Mm -hmm. Certainly all the short, snappy names and all the obvious names. .net, they have all of those too. But they also have like .pizza, .ninja. .coffee. .coffee. I have Leo.ist, I-S-T. I -S -T. Oh, I like that. Leo. Are you going to put out a magazine? No, it's... Um, I, I, I'll, it's a long story. I'll explain what I, I <laughs> but I use it. No, I, if you go to Leo S, you'll see what it is. But it's really um, fun to have these domain names. And Hover makes the DNS management easy, mm -hmm. very easy. So it's very simple for me to say, oh, put this one on my WordPress. In fact, they, if you have you want to show my space or WordPress, yeah, show his domains. If you have MySpace or WordPress, they have one click signups that will just connect Micah.xyz, Micah Rocks, Chihuahua.coffee. There's a good example. Right? Absolutely. You wanted Chihuahua. I'm sure Chihuahua.com was not available. Chihuahua.com was not available. But, but isn't it better to have Chihuahua.coffee? Yeah. I ended up choosing for my super secret encrypted email, secret.house, H-A-U-S. I love it. Secret house. Secret house. And then I'm Klaus. I'm Klaus at secret house. Klaus at the yeah, secret yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun, right? I love but it. The other thing about Hover, it's affordable and fast. They don't give you a bunch of upsells. So many other domain registrars make their money on selling you stuff like web hosting and things. Hover doesn't do web hosting. And they don't, they give you who is privacy just built in because they know you want it to be private. There are so many domain extensions now. No matter what you want to build, there's a domain name waiting for it. They've got great technical support, which I've used many times. The UI is very simple. There's Mark Fraunfelder. He uses Hover too. Oh, there's Leo.monster. Oh, how could I have missed that? Leo.diamonds, Leo.luxury, Leo.shoes, <laughs> Leo.watch. Maybe that's where my Apple Watch is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you see the prices vary. So there are very expensive domains like Leo.security. Oh, Leo.baby. But most of the domains are very, very affordable. But you get to choose, you know, if there's a domain you want, check it out at hover.com. They also have monthly sales on popular TLDs. So you might want to check it out regularly. Hover is the place. Steve Gibson was looking for a new domain registrar. He didn't even know Hover was a sponsor. He settled on Hover too. It's not easy to, it's not hard to see why Hover is a, Great choice, a very popular choice for anyone starting a business. Go to hover.com slash twit. You'll get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. And by the way, people sometimes say, well, shouldn't I have my domain name with my hosting? And I don't think so. If you decide you want to move exactly. from Squarespace to WordPress, which I have done, you don't want Squarespace to own the domain name. It's much easier if Hover owns it. Keep it separate. That gives you the flexibility to choose a platform you need you don't want to be stuck with a particular solution and whatever you do don't let the consultant you brought in register your domain name because he'll keep it when mm -hmm. he leaves but honestly you can do it it's easy hover.com slash twit it's also fun i have a, a problem <laughs> do you know how easy it is it's so easy are you registering something so right now you can pay with apple pay look at that i am about to register for what what, what are you registering micah.tech well you should have had that in the first place how could you have missed that, that? 
Hover.com slash twit. 10% off your domain for a full year. We use Hover. We love Hover. You should use it too. Maybe you're not registering a domain today, but when you do, remember, Hover.com slash twit. And, you know, don't be, don't like, be like me and Micah. They just <laughs> register domains for the heck of it. Or do it. It's fun. Actually, it's really fun. It's really, really fun. It I is. have so many great domain names, so many more than I have any use for. That's the problem. That. But I just, you know, it's like, and then when I need something to hook something up, I go, oh, yeah, I got that. <laughs> I have some, I have some great domain names. But you don't have fancy pants. No, maybe it wasn't fancy pants. But I do or now. Maybe I let it go. You know what? Tech. I let it go. Oh, and I decided got not it. to sell fancy pants. Let it pants. go. Let it go. <laughs> no fancy pants no anymore. No fancy pants. But I do have tunic time. If you ever want to sell tunics, I. You know, I did. <laughs> that was the business I was in before I joined. You were uh, a tunic salesman. I was a tunic salesman. Was it door to door? <laughs> door to door tunic salesman. <laughs> You really did do a background search on me. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, okay, Micah Sargent, former door-to-door -door tunic salesman. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do some news. News, news, news. Wait a minute. I was going to do the news live because you know what? They say, I don't know if I believe them, that I can sign up. Everybody can sign up today Boom. for an Apple card. Shall we try it live on the Force air? Force quit your app first. Okay. So this was what you were telling me is... You go if if you go to the wallet. In, uh -huh. Apple said in the press release, mm -hmm. all you have to do is press the plus sign, and it will automatically offer you the chance to sign up for an Apple Card. Let's see if it's going to do it. Now click continue. It's after the screen. Oh, it is after the screen. So I. <laughs> oh, you didn't. I never click continue because I think oh it'll say it there. Oh, okay, no, it's the next one. Okay, add cards. You have it. Oh. oh! So actually, I have I have continued in the past, and it puts a little thing up to take a picture of the yes, card. Yes, that's the normal one. So. Mm -hmm. The, the supposed trick, which never worked for me, was, oh, if you get to that point and it puts up the little scan thing, force quit the app and try again. Interesting. But today is the day Today's you the can day. get your you get Apple card. card. A new, and by the way, they just announced uh, they've always had 3% cash back using the Apple card for Apple products, but they just announced it will work with Uber and Uber Eats. No way. Yeah. And well, 3% is not a, a huge amount. But it's still something. Mm -hmm. And, and they're they also doing the a national right parks away. thing. Um, I can't remember how much cash back you get, but the national parks, because it's like the 109th anniversary or something, if you buy your like entry to the na to any national park, you get some cash back on that as well. So I'm skipping the 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 f information form. Yes. Um, yeah, I can. So and it wants your residential address. So don't show this, but it's it should be pretty simple after this, right? Have you done it yet? No. Remember, this I'm is, not going to do it. I, I, this is. You're a smart boy. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not. You know, I found people it. who sell tunics door to door usually are a little more brighter careful. than the average bear. Yeah, because yeah. they've seen it all. <laughs> you know, you really have seen it all when you fit <laughs> tunics on different people <laughs> all across the United States. Uh, don't show me filling in the last four digits <laughs> of my social, but that is all you need to do to verify your identity. I thought I needed your full SSN, just your last four. No, well, right now, for me, maybe it's because I'm special. Oh, yeah. But uh, it also wants my annual income. Yeah, definitely don't show that. You don't want to show Leo makes a dollar a year here at Twit. Please provide like your Steve estimated... Jobs. I don't want to even show you That's my fine. I'm not, I won't look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to show anybody. Nobody gets a lot gets of money. I don't want to... Nobody... There would... It would cause jealousy. It's like when you live, win the lottery. Don't tell your neighbors. It's the, oh, did you win the lottery? It's the equivalent, Leo, of uh, wearing that peddler spec in uh, New So pets. it's asking for trouble. So Apple Card, I'm, I'm now past that point. So you can show this. Apple Card terms and conditions. And by the way, and you want to pay close attention to this. Notice the APR, the percentage it's going to charge you if you don't pay it off. Mm -hmm. And kids, Just little tip. Off. If you're going to get a credit card and it is handy... If, you, if at all possible, just make it a pledge to yourself to pay it off each month. Then you'll pay no interest. And then it's a convenience. Mm -hmm. And the real benefit of the Apple Card is it works with Apple Pay, but you can then use a credit card everywhere and still have the privacy of Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something to be said for that. But honestly, get running a credit card balance is a bad idea because that interest rate could be as high as 24%. Uh, and they even talk about that. There's no annual fees, no transaction fees, no penalty fees. Uh now, are they going to tell me what my interest rate is? Yes, they should. Yeah, they're submitting they'll, they'll my application. Everything. You might have to do depending. To Goldman you might have to Sachs send... Bank USA. This is something else we should mention. 
Apple has only really two things, three things with this. The name, they designed the beautiful titanium card, <laughs> and they designed the wallet app. Yeah, the software. Everything else is done by Goldman Sachs. And if you think that your credit information is not going to be submitted to the credit reporting agencies, read, read the info because it will be. Yep. So... Now, a photo ID is is required to verify my identity. Yep. Uh, and most, I think that everybody has had to do that. So. Yeah. You didn't? Oh, well, most everyone is, uh, maybe, has to do maybe that. Maybe because I'm so famous. Well, Megan <laughs> had to do it too. So yeah, the fame thing makes sense. John, you didn't have to do a photo ID? Interesting. Was this the last step? Wow, so I'm very close. You are very close. To having my very own Apple card. Now, we did talk about this a By little bit. By the way, bit. we've lost everybody watching because as soon as I said everybody can get it, they all started doing it. Doing it, yeah. So we did talk a little bit about this last week where uh, Goldman Sachs is doing is dipping into subprime lending with these cards. Yes. Where they have not so much in the past. Yes, this is new for them. Yes. Okay, it says a driver's license or state-issued photo ID is required to verify your identity u.s documents only so my chilean birth certificate will not work here mm -hmm. nor will my estonian digital id card <laughs> darn it but i am going to scan the front of the card right now i wonder if my uh, membership to the national tunic society would count my, my <laughs> membership card for the national tunic society it said i should should have put that on the on the on the desk but i'm going to do it now i was because i can't Okay, confirm the back. Yes, that's the back. That is indeed the back. That is indeed <laughs> the back of my card. And now it's submitting, and so am I. <laughs> I'm submitting, submitting to all to... that is Apple. <laughs> this is the last step, the final step. Is this the final step? And is this where it's going to tell me, John, what my interest rate will be? Now, I have to tell you, I do not have a perfect FICO score. Oh, maybe I do. My credit <laughs> limit is $30,000. And, I, and you've got the lowest APR. I've got the 12.99% APR. Should I accept this Apple card? Well, yeah. I, with this ring, I went through, with, <laughs> with this go. card. You went through the whole process. You might well. All right, I'm going to accept it. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Lori was talking about a friend of hers who had a very high FICO score getting a 24.99% APR. Probably not a long credit history. And that, I have the longest credit history. Of any of person anybody. alive. And and as far as I know, no bankruptcies. So will this be my default card? If you choose for it to be. But Why not? Oh, okay. right. So now I have an Apple card. Yes. It's done. It's done. You've done it's it. It's a MasterCard. Uh, but I don't have the physical card. That will be mailed to me. Get a titanium card to use in stores and restaurants that don't accept Apple Pay. Of course, I'll use my watch or my phone to pay for most everything. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Everybody knows where I live. Okay. It's public record. I live in a condo in Vegas on the 38th floor. Man. It's nice. And there you go. That was, That's I have you... never applied for a credit card so easily. So quickly and easily. In a way that scares me. <laughs> a lot of people are going to gonna be doing okay, that. Okay. Your Apple card is ready. To get started using the Apple card with Apple Pay, get 2% daily cash on every purchase. Your card has been ordered. You'll be notified when it has been shipped. All right. I guess I You're have a done. card. Yeah. There it is in my wallet. Ah, wallet. Wallet. You should buy and a hover uh, domain name. I should buy something. To see how it works. I yeah. should buy something. I'm curious what color is going to show because it shows different colors for different purchases. Oh, uh, yeah. Shimmers, card. I think, too, yeah. right? Yeah. So Megan, she had only made coffee purchases with hers, and so it was like an orange color. <laughs> it was kind of... Stained? Yeah, I was like stained. Exactly. She had spilled coffee on her. Were there rings card. on it? Yeah. Um, so I wonder. Yes, there are. They're little coffee rings. So, <laughs> um, okay. Cool. Well, that was really uh, a little too easy. A little too easy. A little yeah, scary. I now have a, an Apple card. And when we get the titanium, I'll show it to you. The nice thing is I can show it because it doesn't have any identifying information on this the card. There's no true. cut. There's no number. There's nothing. It does have a mag stripe, which has that information that Some, mag stripe readers want. Something Apple did that's, of course, very Apple um, in comparison to, so Apple. to other cards that are made of metal. Yeah. Apple actually sort of carved out part of the titanium and laid the magnetic strip inside. <sighs> Most will just lay the strip on top and then put a coating That's over the top so of it. so Apple. They basically, it's the opposite of embossed. Yeah. Yeah. What the, is that? The stripe. There's a name and I've in forgotten. Dent. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there's there's emboss and em, employee is what it is. <laughs> so I think they em employee. They employed the mag strip. Yeah. So wow, that uh, I have to say that was uh, fun. Yeah, and a that little was fun. and a little too easy. <laughs> uh, but hey, there you go. So it's available. Apple sent out a press release this morning, uh, August twentieth, and they said everybody can do it now. So that's great. Because I've been trying literally for two weeks. Every morning I get up, I, I unlock my iPhone and say, please, can I have an Apple card? But I'm glad I please, saved it this uh... morning. I knew I could have done it, but I saved it for the show. Aren't I nice? Now, I have a question for you. Yes. ESA, European Space Agency. Yes. I'm pretty sure that the European Space Agency, when they post videos and photos and things like that, those are those fall within like Creative Commons licenses, right? Yeah. I really want to show a video. Oh, so cuz we the Pax Tears paid for it. Well, we're not European though, so I don't know. <laughs> I guess we paid for the ISS. I have my Estonian right? digital card. I think that counts. Fair. Okay, so there's a video um of an ESA astronaut. This is um Luca Parmitano and Luca Parmitano became the first human Luca to ever play Parmitano. a live DJ set from space. <laughs> That's my favorite dish here at, uh, at the Cafe Jostra. Yeah? Yeah, Luca Parmigiano. I love it. <laughs> this is uh, Luca. This is, he, this is his DJ mix from uh, let space. Let me switch in the, the card here. World Club. Okay. And the ESA. ESA. Here's Luca. He's in the space station, so that's Hello, why. Hello, everybody. Ciao. Ciao. I'm, Ciao, uh, Luca. DJ Astro Luca. Today, I'm European astronaut Luca Parmitano. From Look, he's the got European it strapped to his thigh. The uh, the DJ turntable. Science. Uh, he's DJ explaining all the science, so you can go watch There's that. There's science. There's science and to I this. I thought at the time that it would have, that such language didn't you what, exist. You know, we it is have very English. Difficult we to... have uh, Russian. We have a lot of different languages. Here we go. Oh yes. This is hysterical. Look at the so Velcro on the back of the iPad. Because he is in space, there's no gravity. He's actually standing sideways, which is Amazing. wild. Yeah. And yeah, everything's got Velcro on it, so he can put that iPad on his pants. Yes, oh, and there's, the, there's a there's, concert. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is very cool. He is playing on an iPad. And he's streaming it live to these folks. Oh, my Oh, goodness. even the steam and everything. Wow. Luca. Luca, Luca knows what he's doing. Luca is a great DJ. He should be wearing his astronaut helmet. That's like with the theme. <laughs> That's right. He has a little marsh plastic marshmallow astronaut helmet. It's just awesome. Uh, awesome. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of of anything to that other than just to say that this is the first time a human has streamed a DJ concert from space. We did have the, what was the Canadian um, astronaut who uh, did Space Oddity, who did a cover oh, of yeah, Space Oddity. Oh yeah, that was wild. He did a music video. Yes, a whole music video. Was that video. Chris Hadfield? I think yes, it was. Yeah. Yep, which that was, was wild. So uh, I, I figured out what my first purchase is going to be Ooh. with my brand new Apple card. I'm going to buy... As yet unpriced, but I do have to put down 2,500 euros to, to get my place in line. The new electric Porsche, the Taycan. And I'm going to use the Apple Card to buy that electric Porsche because it is officially going to be the first car to stream Apple Music. <coughs> you, <laughs> you don't have to have a phone. It's built into the car. It's Apple's done a deal with Porsche. So that is it Siri or it's just Apple Music? Apple Music. No, no, you could still do CarPlay. It supports okay. CarPlay. So you could still plug in your phone if you want Siri and Maps and all the other stuff. The point is, instead of a radio, they're putting in Apple Music in this Porsche Taycan. Now, I, I guess you'd have to have a subscription. But if you can afford what is probably a $120,000 car, yeah. I think you can afford twelve ninety nine a month for Apple Music. Mm -hmm. Or whatever mm -hmm. it costs. What does it cost? Nine ninety nine. Well, I think I don't know how much the family one costs, right. but that's probably the one. So you're this is about. this is very interesting. They just announced this yesterday, and now Are I have we, an Apple Card. I can buy it. I really thought you were gonna say you were gonna buy the DJ app with the what app did was he card. using? Uh, let me go back. Did he say he it well it was a it was a right, okay, collaboration no. between the two. Oh, nice. Um, because so, there are some really good DJ apps uh, for the uh, iPad. We've mentioned a lot. If of I remember, them. it's yeah, it's DJ Pro DJ by Pro by the, the folks one. over. Yeah, it's very good. 
Oh man, I can't think of the name. Algorithm. algorithm Here is another thing I might want to buy with my hot new titanium Apple card. A hot new titanium Apple watch. What? 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 So I'm the idiot. <laughs> First you were the bad person. I'm the idiot. Now you're the bad you're I the did idiot. not, I admit, buy the $72,000 gold Thank Apple God. watch edition. I'm I was, proud of you for I, not. And I don't that. think, I wonder if anybody did. I know they gave it to some people, but I doubt anybody. Anyway. They killed that right away. But in subsequent years, they still did the Apple Watch Edition, their high-end version, out of ceramic. Mm -hmm. And I did buy those because at first I thought, oh, this will be a lifetime purchase that I'll hand down to my son. Then I realized son. Apple was going to make a new one every year, and it was a little more expensive and in no way better than an aluminum or stainless steel Apple Watch. Right. But they're bringing back the Apple Watch Edition, according to rumor, this fall. Yes. So some of the assets in WatchOS 6 reveal that there is a 44-millimeter titanium-cased Apple Watch and a 44-millimeter ceramic-cased Apple Watch. And I agree. This is the issue. The big issue here is that we've got these very expensive Apple Watches that then get updated to yeah, new versions. I realized... Buy the cheapest Apple Watch. I have always year. gone with the aluminum, yeah. aluminum yeah, version. I did this year. But I have to say, I'm a fan. I spent a lot of money for this ceramic bag. Is that ceramic? May I see? You're like, no. <laughs> see if you can tell it. the difference. It's a ceramic back Galaxy S10 Plus. Uh, and it was like 100 bucks more for the ceramic. But it's the same. It's, uh, theoretically, so, so ceramic is a glass. It's made similarly to glass. It doesn't smell different. Taste no. it, though. Uh, yeah, it tastes like bacon. Yeah, whoa. But that's not because of the used. ceramic. No, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I thought it was like a there's chemical a, reaction. There's a long story there. When the sebum on your fingers mixes <laughs> with the ceramic on the. No, in theory, ceramic is like a glass, but it's more durable. In fact, you may know they make ceramic knives. They make ceramic bullets. It's a space age material. And I've always kind of had a fondness for this super hard ceramic. So I've had ceramic watches just more traditional watches in the past that I love. It doesn't scratch. It's very good at not scratching. Yeah. However, it is it not shatters. as good at, at not shattering. <laughs> it shatters. So ceramic windshields, no. 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 But it is harder than glass. Mm -hmm. But like glass, uh, like it still has that property of being brittle. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm glad. I, I don't Maybe know. Should I get titanium or ceramic? Titanium's advantage is very light, right? Exactly. And that's what I'm wondering is if the titanium model is going to be super expensive as well. Because if it's lighter, you, there are reasons why titanium makes more sense to me than yeah. ceramic. Ceramic looks nice, and yes, it's scratch resistant, but I'm going for practical over pretty. My wife is wearing last year's gray ceramic. Okay. My, my uh, personal trainer is wearing the year before his white ceramic. <laughs> I had to give it to somebody, and he's a nice guy. Uh, and uh, But they're over a 1000 bucks, so <laughs> that's the problem with these editions. And once I realized... This is just going to keep going. The on. internal components are no Same. different. Yeah. So I just bought the cheapest one I could find, the sport model. Yeah. Last year, and I've been happy with mine. My space gray well, aluminium. Speaking of rumors, we have two new numbers. Yes, we do. Uh, as you know, Apple has pre-announced back in June that they were going to do Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. and Apple Arcade, and they've been rolling out some trailers and things like that. Did you? Have you? I watched the trailer for the morning show. I thought it was going to be a comedy, and now it's. I definitely. Know I don't it's know not. what it was. It's it's a camera zooming through a studio and then overdubbed voices. Well, that was the first trailer. Oh, there's that a was newer a sneak one. Peek. Now they've got one that actually is a oh. trailer. Because they're advertising it like crazy on the Apple TV app, which dry also. Lisa said, "What's that? Is that something new?" I said, "No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet." Uh, okay, good. So I'll look for the new trailer. Yeah. The rumor is, and it's coming from Mark Gurman, so I think it's probably a good rumor. That Apple will launch Apple TV Plus in November. Mm -hmm. That the initial cost will be ten bucks a month, mm -hmm. which is kind of on a par with these other. Was a little more than Amazon TV. It's a little more than Hulu. I think it's about as much as Netflix. It's a little less than Netflix. Or, yeah, like that's right. Less it's gone Netflix. up, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's in it's in the right price range. We'll just have to wait and see. The other rumor, and this was from the Financial Times, is that Apple has already committed to spending another six billion dollars. They spent a billion for these first tranche of shows. They're going to spend another six billion. Still much less than Netflix, which, according to the Financial Times, we don't know where they got either of these numbers, but according, and this is the Financial Times, so they're pretty credible. Mm -hmm. Netflix has spent this year $14 billion wow. on original programming, wow. which you don't even know exists because there's so right. much of it. There's so much original there's so programming. Much. It's hard Have to find. Have you seen Mindhunter yet? 
Uh, yes. Isn't that good? Oh, it's the so good. The new Mindhunter, Mindhunter just came Hunter. out. I haven't, well, I haven't watched the second season Oh, yet, the second I, season's I, out. Oh, I got to see yeah. it now. <laughs> it's uh, Jonathan Groff is the star. Incredible. He was, he was King George in Hamilton. We saw him in Hamilton as really? King George. Oh, yes. See, oh, that's He awesome. spit on me. <gasps> that's how close we were. <laughs> I paid a, a hefty price to get spit on by Jonathan Groff. Uh, no, because uh, as you may know, in the live theater, mm -hmm. they spit on you because <laughs> they're projecting. And oh. he really, when he was singing, he was putting his heart and soul into He's a great singer. And his lips were getting wetter and wetter. Oh. And, the s and those plosives, but man. But you know what? I noticed you went... I would don't mind getting spit on by Jonathan Groff. He's wonderful. Uh, he was really, really good in this. I'll tell you the story some other time. Apple celebrates America's national parks. There it is. So essentially with this, it's just Apple saying, hey, uh, we've got all these different ways that we're celebrating the national parks, including with Apple Pay offering some, uh, they're going to make a $10 donation to the National Park Foundation for each purchase made nice. with Apple Pay at an Apple store at apple.com or the Apple Store app in the U.S., uh, that will go to support all of these different programs across the United States uh, that are that deal with the national parks. And folks, the national parks could really use the money, especially as we continue to cut back on funds for these groups. Um, this is this is fantastic. So there are also some Apple books that are available, uh, some Apple TV apps that are available to get people kind of thinking about it. And then Apple Watch users actually around the world can get an activity award. Um, if they That's do nice. a walk, a run, a hike, or a wheelchair workout. In the national park. Of at least three miles. Okay. And you could do that anywhere because the oh, reason why- it doesn't have to be in a national park. No, oh, it's well, the, the three, three miles, miles on the way to work. Is the, the distance of the park's popular South oh, Kayabob Trail to Cedar nice. Ridge and back. So, so that's- Pretend you're in Cedar Ridge. It's symbolic. Yes. Uh, Tim Apple had dinner with the president. <laughs> He sure did. He went to uh, the president's Bedminster golf course, had dinner, as any good CEO would, because would, yeah. in September, September 1st, the tariffs would, in theory, kick in that would raise the price of iPhones and everything made in China mm -hmm. by, you know, at least 10 bucks. Uh, Apple's got new phones coming in a couple of weeks. I think September 10th is my prediction for the day of the event. Okay. Uh, it's either the 3rd or the 10th. I don't think it'll be the 3rd, so it'll be the 10th. So in two weeks, two and a half weeks, um, or is that three? That's exactly three weeks. Uh, so for the president says, you know, Tim Apple made a very good case <laughs> that the trade war helps Samsung because Samsung phones are not made in China, mm -hmm. or for the most part, over Apple. So when asked, well, are you going to put off the tariffs? He says, I'm thinking about it. See, I I'm think that about it. the brilliant thing here is that you have to approach this person with the way that they think. And so for-, for You got to do it. The president, it's- Money. Uh, you want to be, it's money and it's, you want to be better than all the other countries. Yeah. And you don't want Samsung, you a Korean company, exactly. to be an American company. He, uh, the president said, it's tough for Apple to pay tariffs if they're competing with a very good company. That's not. I said, the president said, I said, how good a competitor? He said, the Tim, Tim Apple said, they're a very good competitor. <laughs> so I thought, very good I thought Tim Apple made a very compelling argument, so I'm thinking about it. Don't well, know what any of that means. Right, that means nothing. September 1st, though, if the tariffs uh, kick in, uh, Apple Watch AirPods will be more expensive. The iPhone, iPad, and MacBook will not be hit until December 15th. They did build in a delay to accommodate the shopping season, but oh. that doesn't really accommodate Apple's buying cycles because that that quarter is a big quarter for Apple mm -hmm. uh, because it's always has new iPhones and almost certainly will have new iPads and it almost certainly will have a new MacBook to sell. And so that tariff, even if it hits December 15th, is still going to hurt. One might say that quarter is huge. Huge. Yeah. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, so there you go. I don't know what to say about that. Well, let's take a break. And when we come back, your questions. And, feedback. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> feedback. Really? Feedback? <laughs> questions and a very scary. You'll, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, Get ready. It's hook and loop, right? <laughs> it's hook and loop. No, no. no. It's, it's got to do with loop. me, actually. It's, it's interesting. 
from a listener. And it's it. you'll see. You'll see. I know what they're going to say. No stripes, dots. They're going to say that to you. That's what they're, I, they're I'm They're going to talk about the moire. The moire. Or the noir, what is it? Whatever moire. it is. Moire. Yeah, moire. Moire. You, in English, it would be moire. Our show today brought to you by this. Oh, I know. Have you got these on yet? Have you tried them yet? Your aftershocks. Do you love them? I love my I love aftershocks. my aftershocks. Every time I want to make a conference call, just the other day I was on a conference call, I pull out my aftershocks. Unbelievably comfortable. And this is the weird thing. Open ear headphones. They do not go in your ear. They go over your ear. Let's see if I can show it with my Using um, bone conductance iPad. technology. Go ahead. Show a... Uh, Show, uh, oh, you got the pretty little, oh, they're not green, but they look green on you. They are green. Look at that. They're green gray. They're beautiful. And what's nice is you could still hear people talking to you. You can hear traffic if you're a runner or a bicycler out in the wild. So they're the safest headphones to wear while you're bicycling. But Absolutely. let me tell you, the audio quality is superb. I don't know. It's amazing. It's not your grandpa's bone conductance. They're really, <laughs> and look at there. I really love it that they're using mica for the model on the box now, which is yeah, I think it does kind of look a little. We looks, do look similar. Looks a little bit like you. Yeah. Looks a little bit like you. Uh, Aftershocks. This is the new Aftershocks Aeropex. I'm very excited about these. Aeropex has landed. The Aeropex are designed for people who get wet. <laughs> So all the aftershocks are water resistant. So if you're running, uh, if you're sweating or you're in, in the rain, that's fine. Or but if you these, get spit on by Jonathan Groff. Yeah. Or if you're getting spit on by a Hollywood star. But the new Aeropex have advanced audio, a longer battery life, and they say are waterproof up to one meter for 30 minutes. <gasps> that's fantastic. The same great bone conductance. So for a swimmer, well, this would be really, really great. And we have to note, not even just the same great bone conductance, they've even improved it so that the drivers are slightly redesigned oh. to give you better bone conductance. Oh, I should get these. With the Aeropex. Except I love my original uh, Aero, uh, Aftershocks so much. <sighs> Two-year warranty. That's nice. You don't see that anymore in uh, consumer electronics. They use Bluetooth 4.1 connectivity. They support multi-point pairing. That means your Aftershocks can be paired to your phone, your iPad, and your computer, or multiple phones as I do. And that way, whatever you know, whenever any phone rings, my Aftershocks are the uh, headset that I'm going to use. They're great for phone calls. Six hours of continuous music and calls on one charge, 10-day standby time, and they charge in just an hour and a half. I am such a fan of this company. They, this new uh, Aeropex has, of course, a tech bundle, and we're going to get you $50 off the Aftershocks, any Aftershocks tech bundle if you go to iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iostoday at checkout. The offer valid in the U.S. only, sorry. Aftershocks is spelled A-F-T-E-R-S-H-O-K-Z, not, not C-K-S, K-Z. So iostoday.aftershocks.com. And don't forget the offer code IOS today for $50 off your tech bundle. You get a bunch of stuff. You'll see it on the website. You get a bunch of stuff with the tech bundle. It's great, including those uh, that beautiful carrying case. And Oh, I love this. Man, now I have to get another pair. Because yeah. I, I, I don't need the waterproofness so much. But, of course, then I could swim with them on, which would be kind of nice. I love. We love Aftershocks. Thank you, Aftershocks, for supporting IOS today. All right, let's hear the feedback. Feedback. It is a question. It starts with a question. Yes. Um, so this question comes from Steve from Chicago. Uh, my question is in regards to Apple contacts and using uh, groups. On my iMac, I'm able to move contacts in and out of groups, which makes it easier when I'm trying to send a message to a group. I can't seem to find a way to edit groups on the iPhone or iPad. Yeah. Just wondering if I'm missing something or if I'm being so wildly inefficient that there is an easier option to mail to a group that I'm not thinking of. Uh, I, I'm, I hope that you have an answer for him because my experience has been exactly the same. You can't. No. You have to do it on the Mac. I don't understand that. This is... Or in iCloud. So if you didn't have a Mac, you yes. could do it in iCloud mm -hmm. with your pc i mean but that was going to be my recommendation yeah. it's this it's it's a failing um i don't know if we'll see it in ios 13 i hope so i i haven't made any new groups lately yeah i'll have to look so i have not had the need to do it in ios 13 but as it stands right now if you're running ios 12 unfortunately there's no way to edit groups of contacts Isn't that weird and it is weird because i know several people who are not like super techie who use groups a lot yeah in fact more people I would see, like everyday people 
are using groups than yeah. people who are techie because they have different ways of like getting in touch with a certain group of individuals. Now, the good news is a little counterintuitive, but the good news is you could go to iCloud on your phone in Safari or on your uh, iPad in Safari and do it there. Yeah, I think so. Well, that seems like a lot of extra it, work. Actually, what happens? I, I know on the iPad I can't because I'll get the desktop iCloud right. site. I don't know what happens on the phone. Yeah, because they used to block it. Where they could they say, well, you're on a phone. Why would you ever want to use the website? That would be silly. Let me let me try it on here. Yeah, I've definitely got it on iPad. For yeah, sure. So that means you can edit it there. Uh, that seems like it's a little frustrating, but that seems like a, a the only decent workaround. Time for me to submit a bug report. Well, is it a bug? <laughs> By the way, speaking of uh, iOS 13, of course, as we said, I think it's pretty much. Cons Everybody kind of agrees the Apple phone event will be September 10th. Mm -hmm. That's the second Tuesday of September, typically when they do it. It avoids September 11th. That's not a good time. That's a Wednesday. So uh, and it's almost certain when they announce the new iPhone mm -hmm. that they will also announce iOS 13. You know, we didn't mention with the Apple Card, you have to have iOS 12.4 in order to apply for the Apple Card. So if you haven't upgraded to 12.4 yet... Oh, okay. Yes, I was. I thought you were talking about nerds who are running the beta because they. No, you can do it with the yeah, beta. We found most out, recent beta, which is really good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can do it there on your iPad. Let me just see if I can log yeah. into iCloud. Oh, I have to do this whole thing. And you know, it's um, it's taking me to find my iPhone. So that worries me a little bit. Yeah, because that's already kind of saying maybe no only iCloud you can for find you. My iPhone. Yeah. So this is silly. It's silly. You should be able to do this. But you, can't. Uh, but you can't. It's not unusual for there to be little things like this. That's the way life is. A moth has joined us in the studio. Hello, moth. Hello. We have a bug. Hello, Linda. Uh, the moth's name is Linda. So now it's time to talk about another message that uh, Steve from Chicago sent. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Thank you for making uh, making this apparent to me. Um, and, John, we have a Dropbox link in the... Uh, the spreadsheet that you can click on to show. So this is what John sent, or Steve sent. On a separate matter, I saw this Facebook-sponsored post recently, and it looks like Micah's photo was used for a clickbaity oh my God. ad. If it's not you, it's your chihuahua-loving doppelganger. Not sure if you work for geekycamel.com, the site that posted the link, or if your photo was just used without your permission. This happens Super a lot, uncool. unfortunately, and not just to famous people like Micah Sargent. <laughs> is that you? Yes, but look, this is the problem... Well, okay... So and, he, and is that Lori Gill breaking up with you? No. So <laughs> let me explain all of this. That photo of me, it's purposely meant to make me look like I'm having a lazy day. Yeah. I wrote an article for iMore way back in the day when Pokemon Go first came out, and it was how to play Pokemon Go while still being lazy. Basically not have to Perfect. get up and go out and yeah. everything else. Yeah. Now this article makes me look kind of like a creepy stalker. Yeah, because it says that you've moved into this woman's apartment mm -hmm. after she broke up with you Yeah, and won't leave. So, yeah, basically <laughs> she wouldn't take her boyfriend off of the lease and he wanted to be taken off the lease and they had broken up. So this is an and ad so he, and they're using you they're without... Using my photo with somebody else to make me look like she's probably not person. it's all made up so oh, she's yeah. probably somebody else this is the, a huge problem and there's not much you could do about it because we're all putting pictures on the internet yours was taken from iMore so actually mobile nations could go right after them in a serious a copyright way. notice yeah. yeah and i think that's probably what'll happen but uh if they take it off of your twitter or facebook feed right. that's happened to me people have created entire fake facebook accounts using my images from facebook so it's indistinguishable. And that's the thing that upsets me about this. I don't have a Facebook account. And so I couldn't go... By the way, neither do I. So if you see a Facebook account with, by me, it's not it's me. It's not you. Yeah. And so I couldn't go and try to report this right. ad. I I made a Facebook account again that I'm oh, not no. using. I know. That's what really Just to report me. it. Just to report it. So I do want to point out, folks, if this does happen to you, if this has ever happened to you... Uh, Facebook has recently rolled out these new, um, it's an easy way to sort of vet a page. And so when you go to the Facebook page, uh, which I can't show because again, not a Facebook account, um, it has a little column that lets you look at the ad library that the company has rolled out. And it shows like where the company's based, what ads they have running. So I was able to go back and see that that ad with my face on it has mm. been running since July 3rd of this year. <sighs> And I was able to How go in and report each of those ads, and other people did too. And you I think shouldn't you. have to do that. No, I shouldn't have to do that. And here's the thing: if I had posted the photo to Facebook, 
then there's a little bit of understanding that I have for it. No, they stole it from iMore. But they stole it from some other site and put it there. Really lame. And they put it on a thing that could very well damage my reputation. And that's what I have an issue with. This is the thing that makes me look like a creepy creeper. And if it was like, oh, uh, here's an app where you and your dogs can hang out, you then not I'm not going to mind yeah. as much. But this is a real situation that. Well, I think Mobile Nations, it's their copyrighted image. They should go after it. And so you that's, yeah, that's them, actually so. in the works. I What's the name my, of the company so we can. Uh, so Geeky Camel is the one that posted. It's geekycamel.com. Okay. And there's another company too. Uh, can we show that? Uh, thing one more time. Food for food travel. Food for travel is so it's a um, sponsored post mm -hmm, from Food for Travel. But we don't know if the sponsored post so, content is from Geeky Camel. I don't. It is. So it is. Here's the thing. It is from Food for Travel. I went to Food for Travel's page, and then that's where I saw their ad library. Uh, that's where I found that they posted that with my photo on it, and they've got a bunch of those clickbaity posts all throughout. Uh, but I don't know if Geeky Camel is in partnership with Food for Travel. If they are is done the by Geeky the same Camel company. article? Does it have your picture in it? No. Too? And the actual article ah, doesn't have my photo in it. So probably the the geeky camel is not the culprit. It's food for travel. Food for it's travel. The cul culprit. They they added that image. And look at all the comments and shares and uh, responses to this. Photo I would of me and my if dogs. I meet this guy in the street, I'm gonna punch his nose in the face. I, there, there was like no cracking of the knuckles when I did that. I'm mad. Now I'm really now I'm really gonna punch his nose in the face. Uh. Wow. Frustrating. I'm sorry that happened to you. and that, But this is a, a fact of uh, modern times, yeah. I'm sorry to say. Our photos online and they get... they get. Uh, I'm really glad I don't have a Facebook account. And I, I'm sorry that you had to rejoin just to do this. That's what really upset me. It's like I can't go anywhere on Facebook to report this without doing that. <sighs> yeah, what are you supposed to do? So, Steve, thank you for uh, keeping your eye out for me. That is me and not my Chihuahua doppelganger. Um, and I appreciate you letting me know. And I hope that we've given you hope that eventually you will be able to adjust your group contacts in the future. For now, that's just not a thing, uh, unfortunately. But on your iPad, at least, you can go to iCloud.com and make those adjustments. If you, uh, my defense against this is to be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants, you know, if- It's if, my dogs. That's on the other why. hand, if you think about it, if they do use my image in an ad, it's not going to be for, for a product anybody wants to be associated with. You know, adult diapers, <laughs> prostate disease, hair dye. It's gonna it's gonna end in tears. You know, it all ends in tears though. <laughs> it really no does. one's getting out without tears. No. It's it's happened to me too. I, I sympathize. It's terrible. Yeah. And people uh, I think it's happened to Renee was talking to how it's happened to him and Georgia Dow. There's a photo of them yeah. using their iPads that's Just been criminal. Blech. What else you got? That's it. That was it. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's going to be time for our app caps in just a moment. It is. It looks like we're going to have some fun with our hats this week. I'm so excited. <laughs> but first, a word from our sponsor. Oh, I love the Fox. The Fox. I love the Fox. Mint Mobile. Yeah. Mint Mobile. I'm going to start. I got to get my mint wardrobe on. This could be my app cap this week. No. I got the mint Fox. Socks. Mint Fox socks. I got the Mint Fox t-shirt that says, chill the fox out. That's Let me tell you what Mint Mobile is. What you're going to get, by the way, is this in the mail. This is your Mint Mobile SIM. You can bring your own phone. They also have phones. But I think the idea of Mint Mobile is save big bucks on your smartphone bill by going completely online. They don't have stores. You bring your own phone. But the prices are incredible. And I've been using Mint Mobile on my um, OnePlus 7 Pro, and I love it. Now, I, I, I bought the top-of-the-line Mint Mobile. Let me tell you, I get, tw I get unlimited talk and text in the United States. I get 12 gigabytes a month, which is more than I'll ever need, of 4G LTE data. It's riding on the T-Mobile network, so it's the same as a T-Mobile customer would get. But I pay 300 bucks a year. A year, a year for that. And I can buy more data at a very affordable price, less than anybody else. I think it's nine bucks a gigabyte if I need it. My iPad's on Mint Mobile. And I'm going to put everything on Mint Mobile. You you know, figure out what your data need is, and you could pay as little, you could have three gig a month, eight gigs a month, 12 gigs a month. You could be paying practically nothing. I mean, I just think this is the best thing ever. As low as fifteen dollars a month with their three-month introductory plan. That's forty-five bucks for three months. 
Ditch your old wire, wireless bill and start oh, saving with Mint Mobile. Go to the Mint Mobile page right now, mintmobile.com slash iOS. You could put in what you use in, you know, per month in data. Just check your old cell phone bill. And while you're doing it, no, notice the price you're paying. Mm -hmm. Enter it in and you'll see how much you're going to save. It is fantastic. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. And then you choose how much data you want. It's just fantastic. You can bring your own phone. If you want, you can keep your old phone number, port it over, and all your contacts, too, because they're in the phone. It, it, You know, look at that. John's going to save 468 bucks a year. I am I mean, what is what is 300 divided by 12? That's less than 30 bucks a month. I'm paying 90 bucks a month for my unlimited Verizon plan. A third what I'm paying for Verizon. Wow. And I got to tell you, the service is every bit as good. I love it. I'm, I have so many accounts. I have accounts with all the carriers. And I this Mint Mobile account is every bit as good for a third the price in my case. It's just fantastic. If you're still using one of the big wireless providers, you got to ask, what am I getting? What am I paying for? Maybe you want to have a store. Mm -hmm. Maybe you like to browse the cell phone store. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me. It, it by being entirely online with no expensive retail stores, no inflated prices, no hidden fees. Mint Mobile does it right. It is fantastic. This is the new approach to wireless, and they got that cute minty little fox. So cute. I love him, <gasps> Daddy. I love him, Daddy. I love a fox. Can I have a fox? Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan and get the plan shipped to your door free. Check it out. you got to go to the website and see all the offerings. I ended up going for the 300 bucks a year for 12 gigs because I thought, well, I'm going to just use this like crazy. And, yeah, great idea to put it in your iPad, mm -hmm. just, to, just the data sim alone. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. We thank Mint their support of iOS today. And I thank you for supporting us by going to mintmobile.com slash iOS. I am wearing a giant pepper. I don't have to help you put that on. Is it like this? No, it's no. not how you think. Okay, yeah, you do it. It is not how you think. This is the daisy hat. Your face oh, goes in the got hole. It. Got it. Wait, it your goes face? in that hole? Yes. Oh, oh. I thought I'd go like this. this no. No. You're bearing it backwards. Oh, well, no, maybe not. You know, I've been wearing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> this kind of has a Stranger Things vibe to it. It also smells a little bit like pumpkin pie. Uh <laughs> and bacon. That's you again, though, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, why do we look like a <laughs> sunflower and a pepper? We look like a sunflower and a pepper because we are honoring our app caps for this yes. week. We pick an app we've loved to use and we share it with you while making fools of ourselves. It's a simple, simple equation. Why don't you start? <laughs> one plus one equals pepper. <laughs> so the app that I'm talking about this yeah. week. And let me just check here. Okay, good. Um, is called Vuforia Chalk. Mm. Now, Vuforia Chalk is it's another one of them sideways apps. I hate you, these. Oh, we've got here a sideways. Is it a? View. Is it an iPhone app or is it? No, it's an iPad app. But they just don't. Why? It does. Can both. you explain to me why apps, iPad apps, sometimes will only be in portrait mode? I don't understand. Because that. they hate us. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, I thought so. Thank okay. you. Okay, so. This is Vuforia Chalk. Uh, don't is show my a, view just let me yet. Let guess. Is it a chalkboard for your iPad? Wait a minute. You're making a phone call? I am making a phone call. I'm currently making a phone call to... Ty. My mother. Oh. And I'm going to show you how this app works as soon as we get the answer there. Mom! Are you there, Mom? Are you there, Mom? It's me, Micah. Let's see. We're loading. Oh, well, duh, Micah. What's wrong? I've got to show my camera. Oh, oh there, there you are. I can barely are. hear you. I don't know if they're able to turn that up for me. You can barely hear me. Oh, now I hear you a little bit better. So you can hear me. Okay. Oh, man. This is so exciting. So what this app allows you to do. Hi, Ma. I, I, Hi. I'm Micah's new best friend. <laughs> I know I look a little weird. Mom, do you want to try drawing on Leo? Yeah. You can draw on me? Yes. Oh, I oh I can draw on yep. Yeah, circle. Go ahead. Yep. You see that? Oh. Oh, it showed up Did temporarily. 
Now we got to find a way to show this. There we go. Um, yeah, let me turn the screen. Um, actually, go ahead and draw something um, on the front. table. Yeah, Wait on a the minute, table. let me <laughs> let me go walk oh, around. Oh yeah, Leo's gonna get I'm in front. Go walk around, and then we're gonna let so you draw you on him. Me. Oh, oh look, look it's a heart. Now, Leo, this is AR. So you see, as I move away from that heart, I can come back to. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's awesome. Hi. Move. Okay, yeah. So you can draw something. There you go. An arrow oh. toward Leo. <laughs> And see, as I move away, that AR stuff stays in the same what? place where it is. Now, no way. If I move? go ahead and move. It should stay pretty anchored. Yeah, it's yeah, that's awesome. the heart staying where it is. And so I can go down and come back up and those are still there. So the point of this app is not to draw on people's faces. This is so that if you need help with something, say you are needing some plumbing oh. done, I could call up my friend who does plumbing very well and say, hey, here is the underneath of my sink. What do I need to do? And the person on the other side can, and mom, you want to so draw a circle for me? See, we're not going to see your mom. No. Uh, I want to see your mom. And here's the reason why. I would show her side of the screen, but we tested this before we did it live. Yeah. And she has an older iPhone that oh, doesn't, doesn't have the well. augmented okay. reality features available. My mom's not real cool. <laughs> mom, you know what? You're going to get hand-me-downs on a regular basis. Yes, exactly, <laughs> as I'm getting updates. And so this would allow then my, my uh, plumbing savvy friend to say, okay, you know, I'm circling here and I see you need to undo this nut and then connect this pipe here and I can draw arrows and she can draw arrows. Oh, that's really cool. And then there are arrows around the outside that say, okay, here's where the last time we drew are. Here's the anchors to those different things. That's so great. Yeah. So this is a super cool app. Now it only does give you three minutes per call, Oh, but it's free. And the reason why mm -hmm. is because Vuforia is a company that um, does this on kind of an industrial level. So it's an advertisement for their capabilities. Exactly, yeah. 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 This is meant for um, professionals who are, you know, in huge manufacturing buildings. So you see that knob there, you turn that knob, and exactly. then you get your wrench there, and you open up the valve. And yeah. But you can use it for everyday stuff. It's Like I said, it's three minutes, so you have to make sure you know, you've know got it set up, you're ready, right. and then you, you can Very ask cool. about it. Uh, but, Mom, I'm going to let you go now because we've got... Thank you, Mrs. Sargent. Okay. It was really nice to meet you. We love Micah. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for letting us take him away. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. Is she a teacher? No. Is she in school? Mm-mm. Why was she at school? Oh, she was my sibling. Oh, she was picking up. Or actually, it would be my yeah, it would be her partner's youngest son. She was picking up a kid. Yeah, at school. she's picking I up a kid it. at school. Okay, okay. Yeah. So fun. That is Vuforia Chalk, and if you need help with, and I I like the idea too that if my grandma, for example, was like, "Hey, Micah, you told oh, me you yeah. told me how to use Cash App, but I forgot what yeah. buttons do I need to press?" Oh, I oh, I could use this with my mom. Exactly. Because she's always saying, "Let me show you my screen," and saying, "Mom, I don't, it can't, <laughs> it's not going to help. You're not going to be able to see me. I won't, I won't see this blurry picture." But now I could say, "Okay, good," and I can illustrate. Yeah, that's the that's right the there. That's the push. button. Love it. Euphoria, Euphoria chalk. chalk, and that is free in the App Store. I have another free one that's open source and is, I think, a really interesting app. And this, uh, I came up when, uh, as as you know. <laughs> Continue. Sorry. My little my little flower friend. <laughs> Micah, for those of you not watching, is bobbing back and forth in his daisy hat. <laughs> he really likes it. The, I'm, I'll wear this all day. You no, can I borrow won't. it if you want. It's choking me a Take little bit. Take it to the disco. So. <laughs> um, actually, that'd be great for a rave. It would be. Oh, man. We're both headbanging now. <laughs> so when Evernote, I was an Evernote champion for years. In fact, Phil Libin, the, the former CEO of Evernote, once told me that 5% of all Evernote users said that they were there because Leo Laporte told them to wow. use it. I mean, I've been a real champion of it. I love it. And Evernote, Phil left. Evernote went through some tri trying times. They had some problems. And they started charging. And they started charging a lot, like eight bucks a month for an Evernote subscription. And I thought that that was really more than I was willing to pay. I liked the features of Evernote. But there was there were really only a few features that I really had to have. The mm -hmm. reason I loved Evernote is because it would synchronize with everything. So I'd have Evernote on all my phones. I had it on my iPad. I had it on my desktop. And when I took a note, it would automatically synchronize everywhere. Right. So the so there's a guy who came along who said, you know, I want those features too. I'm going to write an app that does everything Evernote did. We'll import my old Evernote files. <gasps> 
perfectly. That's the best. So part. that I can just move over. And he's added more and more features ever since. And it's free. The app is called Joplin. J O P L I N. Laurent Kozik writes it. He gives it away, although I have to say as a Patreon, and I kick in because I, I, I think this is so worth it. This is this is my um, uh, Joplin notebook. And you see, I've what I've done, because I have so many notes in here, is I've, I've actually divided it up into larger notebooks, work, play, travel. I have my archives. These archives contain all my, um, oh, you know what? Yeah, they contain all my previous Evernote stuff so i imported this all into my archives oh these are conflicts that's why i'm conflicting with another link it's very easy to fix conflicts and move stuff over when you it's synchronizing right now uh, i have it on every one of my machines uh, i also have a re reference section you can see that you can i'll create a new note you can have sub notes mm. so i for instance have a markdown cheat sheet markdown is the technology used to create these notes. Now, I know you know, Michael, what Markdown is, but if people are new mm -hmm. to this, it's a very simple way to do kind of fancy kind of web formatting. style yeah. formatting within a, uh, let me actually, let me. Without ever this. having to take your hand off the keyboard. Yeah. Uh, so you can see I have tables, you can add images, you can have check boxes, to-do lists, all the things. Check boxes? Yeah. So actually, that's easy to do. In fact, I'll I'll go back here and we'll we'll do we'll go into play and I'll create a new note. So you can make a new to do, a new note, or a new notebook which will contain more notes. Let's make a new to do, and this is send Micah's mom a new phone, and that's got a check note already on it. I'll save it, and now that'll sync to everything, which is great. Once I do it, I can check it. So it's really a good to-do list. In fact, I do have my to-do list on here. I record calls and meetings. You can embed uh, images. You can embed audio. You can embed PDFs. So it can hold everything. In fact, I have a several hundred megabyte uh, now uh, uh, Joplin notebook. Holy moly. Yeah. You can record or you can embed the recording. For yeah, it. you can't record with it. Mm -hmm. And there are some very good apps uh, on the iPad that'll let you do that. It is a little simplistic in its UI, as you can see. I don't mind that. No, I want it simple. Yeah, I want it simple because I'm going to write in it a lot. It also will support external editors. I use a very nice uh, Markdown editor called Typeora on Mac, Linux, and uh, Windows. This will automatically open if I want in Typeora, and I can do I can write a whole article that way if I want. Um, this is, I think, a, a, a really nice job he's done making a replacement that's absolutely free for Evernote. You can sync it to a variety of things. Uh, any web dev server. So you, if you wanted to really be private, you could have your own, you could sync it to your own server. I sync it to Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And they do have uh, trust no one encryption built in. So the fact that encryption is there, and I'll show you um, the encryption configuration. I Actually, don't show this right now, John. Let me just make sure it doesn't show my passwords. Oh, no, that's one of the reasons I'm not getting everything. Uh, encryption is not enabled on this one, so I'll enable it later. But you could have end-to-end -end encryption so that Dropbox can't read anything. Nobody can read that's your stuff. Lovely. It's very private. Uh, this would be, you know, it's, again, bare bones. It's not, I've talked about my, uh, my preferred journal, uh, which is day one, which is a little fancier, but it, I don't want to put all my notes in day one either. That's a little bit more of a personal journal. This I use for business. For instance, I have uh, I was looking for a way to have um, a travel uh, notebook that has everything upcoming in it that I could easily share with Lisa, that she could put it on her computer and uh, and uh, keep track of everything we're doing. So I've create, created a whole diary of our uh, our upcoming trip with all the excursions and things we're going to do. I've even embedded some Israeli expressions in here, including the Hebrew, because we're going to be going to Jerusalem. Um, I have a daily diary of all the ports we're going to, and so I can go into my diary and I can add notes. I can say, here's what we're going to be doing. Here's where the dinner is. And then I can share it with Lisa as well. So this is really a nice way for me to keep track of uh, a lot of information in a, in a small space. Uh, and I love it that it's absolutely free. Although, as I said, I support him with a, a, a Patreon. And it has dark mode. Oh, I am running in light mode for your benefit, but absolutely, the dark mode is very good and it's universal. So.
there's a if you go in the set and you're like see you've already downloaded it and you're gone into the configuration <laughs> there's a lot of configuring you can do including uh you know uh i mean i just go on and on all the things you can configure there you go yeah, look lots at this. of options Whoa. it also has um one of the things i really like it has advanced markdown plugins so there are additions <gasps> to markdown markdown emoji yeah there are, there are additions that make it really, really even more powerful. I would suggest starting with basic markdown, mm -hmm. but uh, you can add incredible stuff. I use footnotes, table of contents. It'll do automatic tables of contents. So I think also for a writer, this is great. There's one more feature that you're going to really like. It does versioning. Mm. So if you turn on note history and then you have a slider that says how long you keep it for, you could keep it for up to two years or as little as one day or just not version at all. I keep... I keep uh, three months worth of notes. So if you've deleted a note or, and it, it handles conflicts very well and things like that, you're not going to ever lose information. That's lovely. Yeah. Joplin, J-O-P-L-I-N. I finally figured out he named it after Scott Joplin because Scott Joplin's rags have a lot of notes. So, okay. So this wasn't the city in Missouri. Joplin, Missouri. That was That's what I thought at first. But I don't think Laurent Kozik is from Joplin, Missouri. I think he's... Probably from Montreal would be my guess. Works on Windows. This is the other reason I use it. Windows, uh, Mac OS, and Linux. That's because it's an Electron app. So it's oh. it's on every platform I use as well as iOS. There's a great iOS app, which that's what I'm using. It works beautifully with the iPad and the iPhone and also on Android. There is even a command line terminal app that works on Linux or Mac OS. So this is pretty cool. There's also a Chrome extension, Web Clipper, Chrome or Firefox. Uh, and I use that, too, so when I'm on a page and I want to save it to my notes. This is feature-rich. He's been working on it for some years, and he's got more and more in it all the time. Here's the information on how to import from Evernote. It did a perfect import of all my that's, hundreds that's of Evernote. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, supports NextCloud, Dropbox, WebDAV, OneDrive. Not iCloud directly, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't mind that. I, I like the idea that, you know, I can synchronize to my own server if I want. So if you're running NextCloud or you have a WebDAV server, that's really the ultimate in private notes. Joplin, joplinapp.org. You can download it on your iPad or iPhone. Which I have done, and I'm very... See, look how excited I am about it. So it you used me. Evernote, obviously. I did use Evernote in the past, but I hadn't in so long that I just started keeping notes in the Notes app on Which iOS. Which is actually a great app. It's not a bad app. The only reason I don't use Notes is because it's Mac-specific or Apple-specific, and I still have to use Windows machines and Linux machines. If Notes added Markdown support, then I'd and be Markdown. Good. So you'd, you'd know Markdown. I, I know I and a lot of writers... Markdown. Uh, Markdown at first is like... The idea is instead of... Uh, if you want to make something bold, you just type asterisk, asterisk to make it bold, and then you end the bold phrase with asterisk asterisk mm -hmm. so it's still readable you kind of look at it and you go oh yeah i see asterisk that's bold text but then it converts very beautifully it's very well supported by a huge number of apps and do you submit articles in uh, markdown i wonder if i did yeah editors will take it as yeah. well so that's nice too mm -hmm. you can always output as a pdf from joplin and send that to an editor as well so. and ia writer what we talked about before that was the main one ia writer is fantastic that's yeah. a markdown and it seems editor. like they Yes, it's a work. Interrupt. In fact, you could have uh, have IA writer be your external editor if you wanted to do that. And so that's that's another thing. When I write articles, I store them in Joplin uh, as an archive. And so it's very easy to use a writing tool uh, and then store the written work. So I have a whole folder of uh, of writing, including talks and and articles I've written and so forth. And it's nice. And the footnote feature is very handy too for writers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It says full footnoting. So that's Joplin. Joplin. And that's our show for the day. Thank you so much for joining us. iOS Today uh, is supposed to begin at 9 in the morning on Tuesdays. That's specific time. That'd be noon Eastern time. That'd be uh, 1600 UTC. If you wanted to watch live, go to twit.tv slash live. You can listen live as well. We like, you know, honestly, I, we try to make the show this so that you can listen to it. But really, it's a very visual show. There's hats. They're showing off apps. There are hats. There's stripey shirts. <laughs> Stripe. So if you get a chance, watch the video if you can. Mm -hmm. We will make audio and video available after the fact as a download at twit.tv slash iOS. Best way, best thing to do, subscribe. Find in a podcast application, iTunes, whatever it is that you use, and subscribe to iOS today. That way, the minute we're done on Tuesday, it'll be available for you, and you can listen to it on your Wednesday morning commute. If you want to send us a question, 
you can go to iOS today. You can send it to iOS today at twit.tv. Uh, that's how you can send us an email. You can either do that in text or we really like it if you record a video or pictures. audio yeah. and send it to us. Yeah. So you can do that by, you know, you can upload it to YouTube and just keep it unlisted and then just share the link with us. Or uh, if you want to try sending a, a big old video file, then, you know, use Dropbox it, it with it that. 30 seconds. It should exactly. Yeah. 30 seconds or less uh, yeah. so that, you know, we can make sure to get your whole question in there. But we really do love to get the those video and audio questions asked, and we will be happy to answer those I have those to say, we're you. getting a lot of mail, which is great. Yes. People love Micah. Uh, we loved having Megan come back. Thank you, Megan. We'll see Megan again. She said she'll fill in any time, so she likes doing this show. She just doesn't like doing it every week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.